Welcome to another episode. It's been about a month since the last video and as most of you know my mother recently passed away so I've been going through some things on a personal level and also doing a lot of sorting and organizing and getting things uh, handled properly here. It's a big job and uh, I will say before, first off, uh, before she passed away, my brother agreed to move in and help me take care of mom and dad because it got to the point where I couldn't do it on my own anymore. And then a week after he moved in, about a week and a half later, mom passed away. But now he can still help take care of dad. So when I go to work, it's, everything's fine. I don't have to worry about anything, which so that's a blessing. And I appreciate everyone who's been offering prayers and kind words and support as well. It's much appreciated. But he he has a lot of stuff of his own. And if you've seen the videos where I clean my workshop, um, I, I, I've gotten rid of a lot of things, the clutter, trying to clean it up. But now there's even more in there with his stuff. So I can't I can't uh, do a lot of repair right now. But we're working on it. We're getting it cleaned up and sorted also. And I will say the first video that I'm going to do when I'm able to is to finish up that Sakosha wall clock video. It's long overdue and I apologize to everyone watching and waiting for a conclusion to that. So, so what I'm doing to make more room in the workshop is you saw many of those clocks that I put into totes for storage and then I was going to repair them later. Well, I need the room, so 
I'm taking them out of the totes and putting them up on the wall whether they work or not and uh, making shelves to put the electric clocks on that'll clear up space in the workshop also so that's what I'm doing now and I'll show you some of those Japanese clocks I put up on the wall I like them I think they look nice and eventually we'll hopefully get them all running so I'll show you that now and then we'll come back and talk about the rest of uh, what I have to share in this video I, I came across these big boxes of pictures, family pictures. They were just stuffed in boxes, uh, and you saw you saw the pictures on the bed. These are these are old pictures from early 1900s, late 1800s, and these are actually collectible. People buy these to accent. Um, art displays, <sighs> period clothing to show in videos they're making. There's different reasons why people would like these and these sell around seven dollars each on up depending on the kind and the quality and so forth. But at the end of my last video uh, a viewer said when you get to a certain age, this is Randy, he says when you get to a certain age and you don't have any children, you have to consider what's going to happen to all of your clocks. And I was thinking about his question, and it also applies to these pictures. I don't have any children. My brother doesn't have any children. So when we're gone, well, everything just go to the garbage or somebody sell it off. Strangers come and take all your possessions. So what do you do? What do you do with your clocks? What do you do with your pictures? Well, what I've been doing is I've been going online to a website called Find a Grave, F I N D A G R A V E dot com, findagrave dot com, and they have like this one, this this picture here. Who is it? Uh, I need my glasses. Gertrude Klima. <laughs> Anyhow, all of these pictures here are from uh, 
my dad's father and mother from their side of the family. And on my grandmother's side of the family, I've sorted out all of these pictures and I found out who almost all of them are. 90, probably 99% I found out who they are. And I've gone to this website, findagrave.com, and I did a search for the people in these pictures. And usually at the Find a Grave site, they have, uh, they have a picture of the headstone. And usually that's it. But you can upload videos. I mean, not videos, but you can upload pictures of what the, how the person looked. So I have found a huge number of these relatives and I've uploaded their picture to the site. So now when, when other relatives that live who knows where, they're tracing the, like, say their a parent died and, and, and find a grave, it shows a link to their parent and their siblings, brothers and sisters, and their children. So all these links, people can discover parts of their family that they may not have known about, and now they can see a picture of their loved one. That's what I've been doing. But I'm also a realist. When I'm gone, I don't want all these pictures just to be put, it, put in the garbage, because they are nice. So, I found a relative, through this find a grave site, I found someone who uploaded a picture of one of the relatives, and I contacted her. And in the area where she lives in, around uh, Missouri, Minnesota, they have a lot of family members over there, but we've never c kept contact with them, so they're all basically strangers. And she agreed to accept the pictures from my grandmother's side, so after this video, I'm going to take all of these pictures from her side of the family and send them to this nice lady who was willing to accept them. She said she's going to pass them on to her children and talk about it with her nephews and nieces and so forth and so on. But a lot of people, I found out, don't care about them. Said it's in the past, they don't worry about it or care about the past, even though the past is... I mean, if one of these people had had not had children, I probably would not be here. So when you think of it like that, there is a connection between you and your family members. Uh, on my mother's side, my mother didn't know her real father. That caused her some pain. For some reason or another, she was kept away from him by her mother. And her stepdad, he himself was an orphan. He never knew his, his parents. So there's a lot of people in the world that don't have any relatives, don't have any ancestors they can look up, don't have any, don't have any nice pictures. Uh, that's just how the waves of life toss you. Some people have a ton of relatives. Some don't have any or don't know any. And some people get married, they don't have children, and the family, that part of the family dies out. So anyhow, I'm glad to find a good home for these pictures. Now, what about clocks? How do you find a good home for clocks? Uh, you can leave in your will that you would like your clocks given to maybe a charity. Like the, I like to support the hospice here because they do good work. You can look up, uh, try to contact uh, someone in your extended family that maybe has younger kids who are interested in clock repair. Maybe, maybe there are, who knows. Maybe you can find someone. But if you don't have any family at all, what do you do with the clocks? Just let someone else worry about them after you pass on. Personally, I don't like to be a burden to others. and. The thought of someone having to sort through all my junk after I'm gone, I don't know. What I'm planning to do is I fix most of these clocks, either sell them or give them to the thrift shop for ch to let the proceeds go to charity. And hopefully when I'm ready to depart, I will only have one or two clocks around me, my absolute favorites. 
because you can't take any of it with you. Some people try, but you can't. And they're just things. So, and, and also when you think about your end, it helps you think about am I being, am I coveting, am I, is my focus on accumulating all these possessions that I can't take with me in that light it almost seems like a waste of time but people like to surround themselves with what they like what's what appeals to them what's pretty it's not just clocks some people collect teddy bears people collect cars anything and everything people collect uh, I just like to keep it in perspective the people that I've never known through looking them up I actually I actually <laughs> many found out a lot of things about them uh, which I found I don't know I, feel, I just feel a connection with some of them so some of these photos I'm going to show you how I work them into uh, clock display so the, some of the ones that I keep that's what I'm going to do and the rest I'm going to try to find a relative to accept them and care for them and pass them down. But in the end, that's the, Randy was right. These are choices that people have to make when you reach a certain age and you have no children. What what's going to happen? You know, many of the it's funny. Many of the clocks that I buy on eBay, you will see in the description from Father's clock collection. The kids really don't care about the clocks. They're just selling them, and. Uh, they want the money from it. It's understandable. If if these were, <laughs> if you had a collection of dolls or something, and your kids don't like them, what's wrong with selling them? There's nothing wrong with it. It's just, um, and sometimes there's uh, clock museums, local museums that will accept uh, donations of clocks. So there's always options of what you can do with your things as you approach your later years or you can just pile them up to the ceiling and when and when you're gone you will there you go you're surrounded with all your beauties <laughs> hopefully that's not how I go so just something to think about it's, all right I'm gonna show you how to just to work uh, some of these pictures in to your clock collection Hmm, finishing up my iced coffee. That's a nice design on that mug. I had four of these, but there's only me, so I gave the other three to the White Dove Charity Shop. There's no one to drink with, so why do I need more than one? And maybe sometime I'll talk about my Chinese tea here. I have a whole crock full of it. Well, two-thirds full. It's called Puer, Puer Tea. But, the one way you, you can work uh, old pictures into your clock collection or any kind of collection or decor is, like this picture here is from the, the very early 40s, maybe 1941 or 40 itself. And so there's a clock from 1940 with a few other things. So basically it's just taking the old picture and matching it up with a clock from the same period. So see all these pictures. You can tell from the dress this is a Victorian period, probably 1895 to 1905, somewhere in there, maybe 1905, I'm just guessing maybe 1905. Then you have this one here, Eddie, that from the hairstyle, that's uh, probably 1920s, or I would say probably late 1920s. So this one's from around 
uh, like say uh, 1902 maybe. Oh, I look for a clock. Like that one there from around uh, that same period. Instead of just having all the clocks being mashed up on mashed together on a shelf, here let me let me remove a couple and put some pictures up there. All right, so now for uh, this clock, which is about 1901, just put a couple of pictures on either side. which are uh, pretty much that time period. So that's one way and then you, if I had another I could have a little clock here with just one picture in between them. Some of these clock, some of these don't have stands. They won't. You need to put something behind them or put a little display. There's little display shelves that you can make or buy. So that's so that's what I'm going to do with the few pictures that I keep. You know, I'll just uh, like this one. This one here is one of my favorites. It's just uh, really sweet. Never met them, they're both deceased now. Brother and sister. Kind of reminds me of the innocence of youth. How time goes by and then the harshness of life sets in and that is innocence is gone. It's just a reminder of Better times, I guess. I'll see these pictures here. I, I didn't even know who these people were. That's um, Bus and Betty Barnes and their daughter Martha. It turns out that she died when she was 18 and then. Uh, they didn't have any other children so but the photos are just real nice people I never met they lived here on this earth they had their dreams their goals their aspirations like all these people and then they're they're gone and you can't take anything here with you I just put this old clock here just for decoration in the middle. Yeah, I still have a lot of cleanup to do. Here, uh, here's some pictures from my mother's mother and uh, husband who's in the Navy. They're all passed away now. There's, there are these cute little, uh, these cute little cardboard cutouts from the 40s. They're pretty. They're 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 different. I've never some of these things my mother had in drawers and I never got never saw them. So it's nice to work those into your decor so when I'm all finished this should look uh, nice. <laughs> I'll let the viewers judge that. Everyone has a different opinion of nice. So there's the butterfly clock. It's a it's a fairly recent one. It's a Tiffany style. Uh, I think it's actually plastic but it's a simulated uh, lead glass with the little Waterbury beehive clock there. That's the one I put that picture to update, do a little update on my site, on my channel. So that's what I've been doing. Oh, one more thing. 
I was sorting through and mother's things and donating a lot to the charity shop and we used to work puzzles together and I found this one look at that I think people know how I like Japanese things this one is Japanese garden isn't that pretty and then you have little hummingbirds and butterflies in the fan down here and then nice flowers mother liked all kinds of flowers and birds and things so so I thought I would hopefully all the pieces are here put this put this together and glue it to a poster board or something like that there's YouTube videos on it I'm going to watch some and then put it on the wall here to the entryway to my room that's just a real nice scene Japanese garden. Mm. Pretty. Well, I hope you enjoyed seeing a seeing a few things that maybe you haven't seen before. This was not a revelatory video with amazing new ways to do things, just showing a few little things that I've done to help tidying up ways you can make your incorporate old pictures into whatever whatever you collect really you can you can use them with anything but the point is these pictures they were in boxes and I've never I don't recall ever seeing them I think when I was young I might have seen some but never even seen them so it was it's actually fun learning who the people are in some of these photographs <laughs> show people with great character so I, I just it's, it's been real enjoyable so I appreciate everyone watching and uh, I don't know I don't even know what the next video is. I, I know the next repair video will be the Sakosha clock but until I get to that point I don't know what kind of video I'll, I will put up next I just have to take each day as it comes um, but I do like to put up something and as I get more organized it becomes easier to do everything okay I wish the best for everyone and we'll see you next time bye for now